Well, brother, sister, look at me. Brother, sister, look at me. Oh, look what your brother grew up to be. Look what your brother grew up to be. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Two Guys on Beer, coming to you from National Mechanics here in Old City, Philadelphia. I'm Johnny Bellata, this is David Monterana, and even though we're both total fans of brunettes, uh, we uh, today are doing two blondes from Belgium. Um, I was wondering where he's going with that, that was well done, okay. <laughs> I try, Dave, I really try hard, you know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, these these two beers, uh, one is the uh, the Merd, Merd Sos, uh from... Uh, actually, we tracked it down. It's actually from Duval uh, that that manufactures this. And this one, Duval is, Morka. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the Gaverhop, and uh, it's another blonde from Belgium. Both are considered uh, strong uh, Belgian strong pale ales, uh, but um, we're gonna give them a try and see if they've been mislabeled or right. are pretty good. Their so. interpretations on a blonde. Now, what's interesting is uh, the one produced by the Duval Morka. Is actually, I mean, the, the brewery there is over 100 and coming up on 40 years old. Uh, the other brewery founded in 1994, so it's kind of we got a little bit of we got a mix of the old and mix of the new. So why don't we do new first and see how it turns up the old? Okay. You down for that? All right. So the first one up is the uh, is the Gaverhock. To Gaverhock, it's like apostrophe T Gaverhock. Again, you know me in pronunciations. We go along just so much. <laughs> Um, okay, founded in 1994, comes from the West Flanders region of Belgium, and we've talked about the Flanders region before. They've got a lot of interesting stuff coming out experimentally, and um, they even have like their I'm gonna own. Gonna get a pop here. Uh -oh. Gonna get a pop here. So excuse me a second. Excuse me a second. Wasn't as bad as I uh, thought. That wasn't it was so be. bad. Um, but they actually have, uh, you know, some of their. Some experts are actually starting to designate some beers as Flanders style this or Flanders style that. So what we've got is we've got um, a very young brewery uh, that's putting out their version of a blonde, and I'm really interested to give this a try. Belgian uh, strong pale ale, you said? This one in particular is uh, is considered a blonde ale, but they were also I read I read some research on the brewery, and they're also considered it a Belgian uh, a, a Belgian strong pale ale. Um, but a lot of places yeah. are just looking at it as a blonde ale. What's in, I mean, like this should be it should be have a little bit of a hop characteristic. It should be yeasty, and you almost want it to have a little bit of a yeast in a blonde. Yeah. Um, it should be it should be light and crisp and very summery. And we're coming in towards summer, despite the fact that today is raining like cats and dogs. Uh, it should be like a fun summer like intro. So. Yeah, it should be. Now, even though it is, even though some of the sites were listening as a Belgian strong uh, pale ale, it's only coming in at 6% ABV. So uh, it's not it's not up where the strongs are, which is usually about nine, right. uh, eight or nine. But uh, but this one in particular um, has a little bit of, uh, you know, on, on the glass, the lacing doesn't stay, but you can see it has a little bit of legs. Not so much on the head. Kind of a, kind of a, I'm almost a little scared of the nose because I'm getting like some grass and I'm getting some like yeah, I definitely get some I'm grass. getting some earth, but I'm getting some tin. I'm I would say I'm concerned it's, um, about a little bit of a metallic flavor. I get I'm getting a little bit of a uh, I'm getting a little bit of a, a lambic quality to the nose where you get that little bit of sour at the end of the of the end of your sniff and um, maybe that's it's it. not it's not too bad, but it's uh, it's got a nice little character to the nose. But uh, let's give it a taste and see what we get. Very much like a light lambic, uh, traditional lambic, which is usually a little bit more sour, and um, you get a very tart quality out of this in the beginning. Yeah, but I feel like it's tart, and and I see that tinny, that tinny flavor that yeah, Dave was talking about, kind of comes across a little bit in this. It's tinny tart, and I don't feel like it has much of a flavor, flavor. much of a flavor <laughs> profile. I don't feel like it has much of a flavor profile beyond that. I really feel like this is kind of like a one trick. Pony and the one trick is kind of a tinny sour, and that's not a great trick. No, nah, yeah, and the mouthfeel on this is um, it seems to coat the inside of your mouth very much. I mean, you're it is distinct, it is there, and it's not leaving, it's staying. The aftertaste is um, is enjoyable, but uh, you kind of want to have another sip yeah. right away in order to get that 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 tarty flavor back in, and then it's, it's just kind of goes. It's a little lemony, it's a little lemony, a little, little lemony. citrus. Um, hop character on this is very it low, guys. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just very low. It's just. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't use any hops in the just use Groot, but... This is so unimpressive to me. I mean, it really is. I'm going to struggle to rate this at, like, a 78. It just is not doing it for me at all. Um, it, it, it is crisp. I mean, it's something that isn't going to kill you on a warm summer day. Yeah. But, meh. 
yeah, I'll give the same meh uh, rating to this too and go 79. Um, I think that it's, it has, it, 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 it sounds, it feels, I feel like it needs to mature. Such a new brewery, I feel like it needs to mature a little bit. Yeah. And um, actually, I would like to see one of these vintage to see if we get it uh, a little bit better style out of it. But All right. moving on, moving on. All right, so um, we're talking about the, the Browridge Duval Mortga. Founded back in like 1871, um, and then uh, in 1890, take, uh, founded by a gentleman in 1871, 1890, taken over by his two sons. One of them became the brewmaster. The other one was basically the delivery man and taking care of doing all of that by horse and cart. Um, in 1971, um, or I'm sorry, 1923. Step back just a, ha a hair. Um, during that time, uh, one of the brothers went over to Scotland and became very interested in the yeasts that they were using in Scotland. Um, and, and Scotland was very tight. Like, the brewers over in Scotland were very tight with the recipe, and they finally got them to hand over some of the yeast samples, and they brought them back over to Belgium. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the same yeast strain. They, they sort of developed the yeast strain based on the Scottish yeast strain, and it's the same one that's used in their Duvel beer. Now, this obviously isn't the Duvel beer, no. but it is by the Duvel Mort Gut Company. Um, in 1923, uh, they had the first brewing of the um, of the beer with the Scottish yeast that they had bred, and somebody said, "Well, that's just a devil of a beer." <laughs> and devil in uh, Flemish, Flemish is, is Duvel, and it stuck. Yeah. So there's why it's named that. Um, this is this is actually more of a pale ale color. I mean, it's not as blonde as I mean. Uh, this this has more, more of golden. like a blonde col color representation to it, right? It's definitely a little bit more golden. Uh, lacing is staying well. The head is that very thin uh, head. It's staying throughout. Um, a lot of times on these, you expect them to have a rocky head, and mm. it's just not. I like the nose profile, of this one. It's a little. This one definitely has uh, more of a grassy nature to uh, it's, it's. It's softer. It's. Yeah, it's a little softer, and I think that we're getting. You can smell a little bit of the heat coming off this at 9.5. At uh, actually 9.8 on the bottle, it says it's uh, it's only nine, but uh, some uh, deeper research found that it's like 9.8 percent actually, and um, I, you can you can smell the heat on this a little bit. You yeah, can get a little maybe bit, a little bit of a hop. A little bit of a hop and a little bit of a spice. I mean, I, I I'm getting a peppery sensation on my nose when I, I smell it, but you know, you never know. Let's uh, give a taste and see what we get. This is more of what I expect a blonde to taste like. Yeah, I will I will agree with that. It's a lighter citrus flavor than this is, but it's Much got a lighter. little bit of citrus on top of an earthiness. And um, it's got a very mild yet noticeable uh, little hot back end to it, a little bit of hot character. Yeah, very dry. It's, it's good, the dry at the end. It, yeah. it, it finishes very well. It's very clean on the mouthfeel, yeah. a little crisp. Uh, but From Belgian Pale Ales, you, you expect the dryness, you expect the yeastiness, and this has got a little bit of a yeasty characteristic too. It does. I it, feel like this is representing very well. I think it's representing very well too, and the nice part about this, and almost the dangerous part about this particular beer, is that it's hiding its power very well. Oh my you god. Cannot, you cannot yeah. taste the alcohol in this uh, very much at all. No. I guarantee you'll feel it uh, if you have like four <laughs> or five of them. But um, yeah. you know, you, it's hiding it very well. Therefore, it doesn't overpower the flavor. You get a very good flavor profile. This I really like this beer. I really do too. I mean, this is like if, if you're looking for something that's sort of like a traditional representation of a blonde, and uh, you've got two choices. I think you've got left blonde, and you've got this. And this is, and I'm going to say it again. It's the Mar. The Marge Seuss. Marge Seuss. Marge Seuss from the Duvel Mortgat Brewery. It, it's really good. It's I, really good. I'm going to toss it in 88. 88. I too will. Um, no, 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 no. I don't think it's too low. I think it's I think it's spot on. I'd give it a. I'd give it an 88 as well. Um, I've decided that if you rate something 88 and I was going to go 89, I'm just going to go 88. What, what's one point? What's one point? The people expect us to disagree. <laughs> okay. Well, we have disagreed on, on some things, but an 88 for me, too. A great beer. Uh, I, I'll definitely be keeping a couple of these in my yeah. refrigerator. To so the rundown. The, to, to the to Gabber Hope game? Yeah. Meh. Totally. Yeah. Totally meh. More maturity. Needs more maturity. But the, the, the Martus... Um, we keep looking at it because we have to try and pronounce yeah, it. The Martus from, from Duval um, is fantastic, and they show their tradition in this beer. So. Yeah. 
Uh, a pretty decent show. So please check us out. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at two guys uh, at uh, twitter.com slash TGOB. And uh, you can hit us up on Facebook uh, with the two guys on beer group. Um, also, please leave your comments uh, down below. Let us know what you think about these beers if you had them or if you have any other beers that you would like us to try that are similar or even, you know, a wish list of beers you want us to try. You know, if you want to even play a joke on us and make us gag on a terrible beer, I mean, we won't mind it. So uh, for two guys on beer, I'm Johnny Bellotta. I'm Dave Moderana. Please go enjoy some beer. Cheers. Well, he's taking the bottle. What? I'm a pop -a -lot.